41 cars are on the lead lap. And much like last year, Kyle Busch wants to command this race. He has led 36 of 38 laps. Yeah, he led the most laps in last year's Daytona 500 and uh, came up short on that pass on the back straightaway, ended up finishing fourth. He's getting ready to be overtaken, I think, by Dale Jr. here. Dale Jr. got a nice push up on the outside there from uh, Denny Hamlin in the 11 car. I think they're going to be able to clear him. Well, maybe not. I think the crowd will let you know who's fighting. Now you saw Kyle Busch pull up and get a little side draft off Dale Jr., which stalled Jr.'s car in the draft and let Kyle lead that lap. File that one in your pocket for late in the race. I would be surprised if you didn't see it again. Well, the lines that they're running, the 18 on the bottom like that and the 88 up on the high side, Dale Jr. loves to sail that thing on the turn on the high side. In the restrictor plate races at NASCAR's two biggest, fastest tracks, Daytona and Talladega, Kyle Busch last year won two of the four and scored more points than anyone did in those four races. And, and this is difficult racing right here. When you've got cars all around you like this, a car on your outside, it really upsets the air. And that car on the outside can make that one on the inside just turn around just all by itself. I mean, just sucks it around. And right now, the only help that Kyle Busch has pushing him is the three Roush Fenway cars there. Matt Kenseth in the 17, David Reagan in the 6, Carl Edwards in the 99. But Larry, I'll tell you, when you look at that 18 car, Kyle Busch can't pass him. I mean, they got up there, but they haven't been able to pass him. And he's been able to hold those guys off by himself almost now that Matt's there behind him. That'll help. You're clear he's not. Second place car for an instant at least, Matt Kenseth in that number 17, Matt. Mike Kenseth, like Kevin Harvick, racing a backup car in the 500. In fact, the driver intros, Jamie McMurray, Kenseth's teammate, was commenting about how much Kenseth's car looked more stable and faster in general in the draft during Saturday's final practice. Kenseth saying the car a little bit on the tighter side. They made an air pressure adjustment on his last stop. And you know what was interesting about the information that Kyle Busch's spotter gave him just a minute ago? You're clear he's not. What he was telling him is his drafting partner, Matt Kenseth, behind him had not cleared Dale Earnhardt Jr. down the back straight away. Yeah, uh, Kyle's got an awesome spotter. I mean, if you listen to him in any of these races, Kyle will give him credit. He says he drives a car. I just go where he tells me to. side to pick up Dale Jr. Let's amp up and go for a ride with Dale Jr. in the 88. What's he looking like in there, DW? Well, I tell you, he looks happy. And I'll tell you what I like. Watch his eyes. He keeps it flashing up in the mirror to be sure where everybody behind him is. He's got Matt. You can see out the window over there, he's got Matt right under him. But what I like is that car is very stable. It's not fighting the wheel. He's just looking around, seeing where everybody is. He's watching who's got the push, who's coming, and what I need to be watching out for. And as long as you can keep turning left like that, you're going to have a good car and you're going to be happy. He has Kyle Busch's teammate behind him, Denny Hamlin, in that 11 car. Then Kyle Busch jumped up in front of Dale Earnhardt Jr. in the 88. Kyle just goes wherever the fast guy is. But that's a bit of a dodgy move when they come out of four and they're headed for the start finish line because the spotters are up on the grand, top of the grandstand right above our position. All they can see is the noses of the cars, and it's very hard for the spotter to clear that driver when he comes off four. Jeff Burton, the 31, backing up a bit there. Yeah, he got way, way up high off two over there. Almost got in the wall. Thank you, 48 pushing. See, it's, Larry, it's just as important for the spotter to understand the draft and how it works and what the effects are as it is for the driver to understand what they are and what's going on. Yeah, and, and I think his spotter has so much experience working with him, I think he absolutely understands that. Well, he knows that Kyle, if he tells him to go low or go high, he knows he can do it instantly. He, he can swap planes faster than anybody I ever saw. Agree. Look on the lower right at the lead car, the number 18 of Kyle Busch. This is coming out of turn four. 
And, and you're right, Mike, because the spotter has the exact view that we're showing the replay right there. So how can you say clear? He's pretty much on his own when he makes that move right there. A little bit of a leap of faith. Hi there, that 41. Sperance. You got a good spotter. He's been there. He's seen the hole. He knows Nobody what's happening. Here. Still outside. Still outside. All clear. And the same is true going away from the start finish line down toward turn one where they're at now. That's tough for a spotter to make a close call there. Hey, what's happened to Denny Hamlin? He was third a lap ago, but Hamlin has now dropped back to ninth and is sliding a little further back. Uh, the old handling package might have fallen out, you know? Maybe the car's going away uh, on this run. Well, we're almost uh, 20 laps into this run, so we're getting close to that halfway of a fuel run here. So this is definitely when handling problems will start to show up, starting to burn that fuel load off, and tires are starting to slide. 45 laps complete, an eight-car freight train at the front of this field. Kyle Busch continues to lead. Dale Earnhardt Jr., Tony Stewart, Carl Edwards, Matt Kenseth are your front five at 49 laps, 122 miles. Joey Logano, one of five drivers starting their first Daytona 500, one of two announced rookie candidates. The other, Scott Speed, is 32nd. Logano right now is 39th. And as you see on the right, Two weeks ago, he shot his first commercial at the Cornelius North Carolina Home Depot and then came to Daytona and attended his first Daytona 500 drivers meeting and driver introduction. Now they were among the last to pit during the competition yellow, so they're riding out back, kind of out of harm's way, feeling things along as we come to 50 laps. 125 miles. Now, the guy that drove that Home Depot car for 10 years, how about Tony Stewart in that 14 car? Remember, this is a backup car. They crashed into practice yesterday when his teammate Ryan Newman lost a right rear tire going through one and two. Started back in 37th in this car. He ran third in the Budweiser shootout. And Cresta, he has made his way to the top five. Tony Stewart looking very sporty, and those were his words back on lap 25. What he just said one lap ago, quote, I have the best handling car out here. It's just not the fastest. Uh, sometimes they don't go hand in hand. I mean, sometimes you got to give up a little something to get something. Give me the handle. When I got Tony Stewart behind the wheel, just give me the handle. He can do the rest. Lapping past Terry Labonte, who will be the fourth car in this race to go one lap down. John Andretti has also made an unscheduled pit stop and is one lap back. Time for a question from Ask.com, the official search engine of NASCAR. What was the largest starting field in the history of the Daytona 500? We're not going to tell, tell you. You have to go to Ask.com. You can also, while you're there, you can enter the Ask.com NASCAR Challenge and win daily prizes. Ask.com. the bottom, but I got no draft, you know. Official search engine of NASCAR. Boy, and they got a lot of stuff planned, too, Ask does. Uh, they're really going to be a big player in this sport, and they're going to do a lot of things fans are going to love, I believe. Now, Bobby Labonte, he has fallen back to the 29th position, started in the 12th spot, ran up there in the top 10. It's like they somewhat got jumbled up after that last pit stop. Back on lap, uh, last on pit road, lap 27. You know, we were talking uh, about Joey Logano there a little bit ago and what he's been through. They came in late. They were last ones to pit on that uh, last caution. And, oh, we got it. Wait, we got a battle for the lead here. Here goes Junebug by uh, Kyle Busch, bringing uh, semi-teammate with him. These two guys love to work together. Tony Stewart and the 14, Dale Jr., they love to work together. Yes, they do. Third lane change of the day. And the fan favorite by a wide margin and perennial winner of NASCAR's most popular driver award as Bill Elliott was before him, 
Dale Earnhardt Jr. front of the field. I think a few of them been sitting on those green hats, but they all came up in the air then. And you know, I know this is the first race of 2009. Look at them waving. They're standing on their feet all the way down the back straightaway, but Daryl said it in the pre-race. I just think the second year of Dale Earnhardt Jr. with Hendrick Motorsports is a pivotal year. And how about Tony Stewart? He wants to lead to this 500, that 14. I don't know if he wants that 18 behind him, though, after yesterday in the nationwide race. Kyle pushed Tony all the way through three and four, trying to get around him. Couldn't quite You're do it. You're leading the Daytona 500. <laughs> yes, I am. That's the spot of Bob Jeffries. Oh. Travis Quapel has hit the wall mm, in his Yates Racing Ford. That's got tar written all over it. He's got the right front locked up. Right front is locked up. Damage on the right front fender, guys. Caution's out for the third time today. The Janesville, Wisconsin driver who time trialed his way into the field has brought out the third caution flag. 